What's your name? Jan Rosenberg. And? Fred Siegel. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, I thought the film was terrific. I thought uh, she picked thoughtful people. Uh, and and uh, I think there's a lot there that will, that, will, that, will, that will be helpful to people who are trying to make sense of this. But for me personally, no, I, I didn't. I, I, it was it was fun to watch it, but uh, I, I didn't learn anything. Because you're already knowledgeable about it. But this, this is what I spend my time. I'm a, I, 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 the book that people might know me for is a, the Prince of the City. I wrote a, a biography of Giuliani. That was a, that was a bestseller and uh, the, the the lead the lead book review for the Sunday Times. Congratulations. Yes, it, it, was, it was an incredible uh, time in New York's history. Where do you live now? Ditmas Park. You live in New York City now? We live in Brooklyn, in Ditmas Park. Okay. How well will this picture be viewed? Will it get seen in the urban centers, the liberal urban centers of America, like Upper West Side, Park Slope? No. 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 no listen, it's irrelevant whether it's seen there. It's, it's question, questions, will it be seen elsewhere? Will, will, will it be seen, will it be seen in, in vast stretches in the Midwest? The, 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 I, I said to Jan, Jan knows this, two years ago, uh, excuse me, two years before the, two, uh, in 2014, I began saying right after that election that the next presidential election will be decided in the upper Midwest. That's true of presidential elections going forward. I don't know what's going to happen in the midterms. It's, it's too quirky to, 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 to predict. But this next presidential election will be decided again in the upper Midwest. That's where this film needs to be shown. I have a different answer. Okay. I, we were talking afterward about the prospect of showing it at our reform synagogue in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought that was pretty slim that the synagogue would agree to have it shown, uh, and other reform synagogues I know, I feel the same way about. So between the Orthodox uh, synagogues and the reform synagogues, I don't think it's going to get much of a showing in Brooklyn among Jews. Uh -huh. But there's so much in the picture about Israel and about anti-Semitism. Why wouldn't the synagogues, and aside from the, the Orthodox, which are familiar with it, but why wouldn't the reform and conservative synagogues want to... to Ideological to constriction. Exactly. Ideological constriction. They're, they're, deeply, uh, uh, they're deeply convinced that Obama was a, an effective president, that, that, the Obama, that, that he uh, funneled money into, into Hezbollah has not, not reached them yet. And it might, eventually, it might eventually reach them, but it's going to take quite a while. Those synagogues really embody a lot of what the film was about and what the film was such a strong critique of, which is the loss of confidence uh, in Israel, in the U.S., in the West. Uh, and I, don't, I just don't think that uh, it would take some major turn to have but it's not much important. They're not important. In, in New York, whoever is, is the Republican nominee next time will lose the state by several, several million votes. It doesn't matter. It's, it's politically irrelevant. More relevant is that Chuck, Chuck Schumer is under a tremendous assault in his neighborhood, in his home, from crazies, left-wing crazies. And if those left-wing crazies pushed the, uh, the, the people who run for Congress, the Republicans might, do as, not, might not do as badly as some people fear. So, but it, it, will, this, will this film be important in New York? No. The, the, the odd thing is that the, the media centers are the, are the place where this film is least consequential, will be least consequential, New York and California. Um, Jan is from Chicago, uh, the center of corruption and veniality in the world. Yes. Uh, it's on the state flag. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, you know, what, what, what ha it, it's, 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 it's not important what, what happens in these places. And uh, it, what, what's, what's important is that, that, that the, whoever the Republican nominee is the next time, and I hope, I hope Trump steps down and lets Pence be the, be the presidential candidate, that, that this kind of thing is, 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 can be discussed, discussed in reform synagogues in those areas, in Pittsburgh. You know that's where that's where that's where the, the votes will count. Uh, it it won't it won't count in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. But you're a writer yourself, and the journalists that you know, especially uh, the ones in New York City and in Washington D.C., will they have an open mind to watch and and uh, learn from this picture? Not in the slightest. Not not in the slightest. Why not? Be because they they signed up, they enlisted in the Obama campaign in 2008. And they never, de they never de-enlisted. They've been played for fools for all these years, and uh, they're not about to change their minds now. 
even when presented with facts by experts? Uh, they have their own experts. They have their own facts. Uh, it, it, no, this will not. Po Postmodernism. Obama was our first postmodern president. It's all the narrative, right? And so he sold. He sold a story about Iran. He sold a story about Russia. I mean, just think about it. Obama came into office a few months after the Russians invaded Georgia. His response was nugatory, no problem. He, while he was while he was in power, the, the, the Russians took uh, Crimea and and much of the eastern Ukraine. But but. But Trump is collaborating with Putin. Uh, you know, uh, Obama, Obama had no problem with, with uh, Putin's aggression. Uh, so if, if, you, if you couldn't explain that to these people, I, 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 some of these people are my friends. If you couldn't explain this to them over all these years, mm -hmm. I don't know why that's going to make any difference now. It's gone. Uh -huh. that's, that's, why, that's why we're in the danger, there's a kind of danger of a civil war. We're already in it. We're already in a soft civil war. In America. In America. We're already in a soft civil war, which, by the way, is not good for Israel. Uh, it, 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 the soft civil war, because what happens is as, as uh, support for Israel grows in the heartland, it diminishes on the coast. Because the people on the coast can't, can't accept that anything in the heartland could be true or just or fair. Uh, so uh, the, the soft civil war is, is going to make it harder uh, now, s some people will argue, well, this is Bibi's fault. Uh, Bibi shouldn't have made that speech in, in the Knesset about Iran. But the trouble is that Bibi was right. I mean, what Bibi said about the Iran deal was true. Yes. Yes. And so I, I wish, he, had, I, I wish he, didn't, he didn't make the speech in some ways because it didn't, it didn't achieve the desired effect. But the, but the upshot is what everyone who follows this closely understands, and I, I, I'm, I'm thinking now of, of friends who are going to scream and pull their hair out of, a, of a, uh, their head for what I'm just about to say. We, we, we've just gone through an, a, failed, a failed soft coup. There's, there was a, 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 I didn't vote for Trump. Now, let me explain why. I worked for Hillary, and I would never vote for her. She was a, she's a Ghana. She was a thief. Uh, she, she belonged in jail. Uh, but I, but you say past tense. A, a past tense I worked doesn't, for. Doesn't she, no, no, doesn't she oh. still belong in jail? Well, it's over. It's, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, or, or maybe, let, let's see what the Inter Inspector General report s says in two weeks. Uh, on, the other hand, on the other hand, I had friends who, who were business partners at Trump, and he's, he's, he, too, he too's a gun. If he stole from he stole from a quarter of a million dollars from a friend of mine. So I, I just stayed home. I, I, didn't, I didn't bother to, to go out and vote on Election Day. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Trump is the president, and the FBI uh, it was part of a... a an attempt by the security services to take Trump out. That's indefensible. That's, that's horrifying. Mm -hmm. I may not like Trump, but, but they had no business doing this, and they, and they, they deserve to be... We, we should have a decapitation of the leadership of those agencies. Mm -hmm. um, and are, are you concerned that, that these views that you hold will limit your career professionally? No, I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> Um, is there pressure, McCarthyist pressure, against uh, writers who come out with uh, views like you're expressing? No, because unfortunately, unfortunately, things have become so segmented um, that that people who write for conservative journals write for conservative journals and and are read by conservatives. No, it doesn't. Because who are the liberals who are asking me to to write for them at this point? Uh, doesn't exist anymore. It used to be. I used to be. I could write for for the New Republic, but that New Republic doesn't exist anymore. You mentioned your book getting a front page review in the uh, New yeah, York no, Times that was a fluke. book review. That was shocking, yeah. uh, because of exactly what you're asking. Uh -huh. And what's the future of New York City now under this uh, Democrat uh, regime? De Blasio. Well, look. Uh, the the key is that 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 De Blasio was smart enough to bring, bring back Bratton with him. And Bratton is the greatest police chief in the history of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know what he did here in L.A. He did, did it in New York twice. So Bratton left behind him a very good situation. As long as De Blasio doesn't screw up too badly, mm -hmm. uh, it'll just go on in this way. The other thing is people in New York don't understand what happened to the rest of the country after the crash of 2008. Because the stock market was so good, New York did just fine. We didn't feel any pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the pain that was felt felt by the rest of the country came as a shock, because you know, you know, you know, you know the old the old joke about in New York look across the Hudson and 
and they, they see the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so, uh, no, it's not going to have much of it. De Bla Blasio can't, the, the one exception to de Blasio uh, having serious consequences in the, was the, with the transit system. And here, uh, Joe Loda, a very good a former Giuliani uh, uh, executive, yeah. uh, 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 no, it's uh -huh. now at the trans transit authority, yeah. Uh, and and he's, he's top of the line, and hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll pull back from the, uh, the brink of, of, of failure. The, the, the Amtrak, uh, the New York, New York, uh, is a, is a, you know, Amtrak is a different matter. In New York State, uh, New York State tr uh, Transit is a different matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know what, what's going to happen with them. Uh, uh, but uh, I think New York will, 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 will it'll, it'll be all right as long as the stock market is, is, uh, is decent. Uh -huh. But do you see the Democrats fomenting this Olinsky-esque culture war it's, it's already happened it, it, the polarization is, ex, is is utterly extraordinary you can't talk to well let me, let me just, the difference between talking to people in new york about these things is you can have a few you can get a few sentences in in new york and people will talk will respect facts to a degree here in california it's all hysteria all the time it's the most extraordinary thing i've ever seen you cannot talk i i have, I have a cousin who i really like who won't talk to me. I, she doesn't have to agree with me. I don't care about that. This doesn't bother me in the slightest. But people won't, won't speak to you. And then if they do speak to you, they don't know anything. They, they, don't, know, they don't know anything? They literally, Jan is gonna grimace. Our sister, our sister uh, uh, has friends who, who, who uh, Jan's pulling, oh my, I, I should shut up about this. I have to, I have, okay, yeah, yeah. I have to live at home. Uh, uh, speaking in generalities. And, ge and speaking in generalities, people who had no interest in politics a year ago are now, are now experts on, on Trump and know that he's a fascist, but they don't know what a fascist is. And, and they don't want to be disturbed by, by the facts. Two years ago, I told people in California that uh, California had the highest rate of, po rate of poverty in the country, a percentage of people in poverty. Mm -hmm. People accused me of being a liar. Now, it, it finally sort of slowly dimmed uh, on people. That, yeah, this is the case. And, you know, uh, California's got, has got a, a, a big problems. But I, my, let me tell you this. Let me close with this. You, you might, we're, at, we're at a New Year's Eve party, and, and uh, I'm talking with an a, a, a interesting woman, and she says, I really want to get into it. And, really, and she says, uh, she says, are you in favor of California seceding? I said, yes, absolutely. I'm strongly supportive of this. She looks at me like I'm crazy. So I see, she says, why, why are you supportive of this? Because I think I don't want to see the rest of the country get, go to war with Kim Jong-un. When you and California are more virtuous, you're more intelligent, you should take the lead in this. You should separate, take the lead in this, and take, take care of Kim, Kim Jong-un on your own. And meanwhile, we'll save the water from the Colorado River for other people. <laughs> Anyway, the woman just sort of slinked away. At, at the, 